What is up everyone? So let me ask you this question. Have you ever been frustrated with your art progress? I know for myself, there have been times when I have been super frustrated with my art progress. And in fact, if you watched the previous video, you would know that I actually almost quit I was so frustrated that I almost quit learning how to draw. But, but I was able to push through and now I'm seeing some progress and, and so I want to share with others some of the struggles I had, some of the things, looking back on it, some of the things that caused me frustration and how we can fix some of that and push through. So 15 things to go through here. Some of them are, are dealing, pointing out the problems and coming up with the solutions. And some of them are just straight up solutions <laughs> to help you, to help you avoid the frustration. First of all, just a little bit of housekeeping. What you're seeing on the screen here is uh, I'm doing four gesture drawings uh, from this guy, I saw one of his photos on Instagram, Ben M. Young. I think he works at the Jeff Watts Atelier, and he had these four gesture drawings that he posted, and the shadow shapes on these things were just outrageous. <laughs> um, they were super cool, and, and I just was like, I have to try my hand at drawing some of these, and hopefully some of that will rub off as well as I look to create my own shadow shapes in the future. Um, but this also is, you know, a little bit of progress for me. The last time, <laughs> the last time I did live, not live, but video just drawing, gesture drawings um, on one of my very early videos, it, it was a total train wreck okay <laughs> uh I, i'm not gonna say much about it if you want to go and see it um i'll leave a link to that earlier video i tried to do adjust the drawing <laughs> but hey this is progress this is progress that i'm talking about and and if you get too frustrated with your with the progress that you're currently making you'll never get to that point where you begin to see how far you've come and, and, and have that opportunity to look back. So this video is all about how to get through that frustration so you can see progress of your own. Uh, so let me just say, first of all, off the bat, I mean, like, who am I? Am I some guru <laughs> that, that can just come in here and, and talk about what, what these are the things that frustrate you and how to solve them no no so if you haven't been following me i started learning how to draw uh, learning how to draw at the beginning of this year almost a new year's resolution and i've gone through frustration of my own and so i'm really just talking out of my own experience things that helped me push through and i documented the whole process because I wanted to be able to share this process with everyone. And so I am here 11 months plus a few days in and I've seen progress. And so I'm just sharing out of my experience. I haven't solved all of these issues myself for myself. I still, I still experience some of these and me sharing this is a part of reminding even myself um, how to get through some of these things when I face them. So with that out of the way, I'm going to jump in to number one, which is really related to some of the things I've been saying so far is you feel so frustrated because you think this frustration is unique to you. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it's not. And, and, the more I've done videos and talked about this and read the comments after the videos, this is a common thing that you will face as a beginner. 
you will face it as an intermediate. There are even professionals who are frustrated with the work they're still doing and there are a few things you need to know. One, you're not alone. This isn't unique to you. You're not, you're not special in this regard. This is something everybody has to get through, but, it, but it's also something that keeps pushing you forward. So this kind of, you're not quite content with where you are, you want to be better. In a sense, that's also a good thing as well if you can harness the power of that emotional frustration. It can actually help push you and motivate you to a higher level. So you're not unique, don't worry about it. Um, it can actually be a good thing that keeps you motivated if if you can control it and hopefully with some of the more some of the other things we jump into you'll be able to do that so number two you need to realize that you will make some bad drawings and and I said some but it's probably gonna be a little bit more than you think all right but but let's let's get this out of the way right because what did you think was going to happen, <laughs> right? I mean, what did you think was gonna happen? Did you think you would just start learning how to draw and it would just be like, oh, I like that circle. Oh, now let me go on to cubes. Oh, what a nice cube. I mean, what did you think was gonna happen? <laughs> it sounds funny when I put it this way, but even for myself, it's strange how you get into these mindsets where for some reason you just think that your drawings when you're learning are supposed to be turning out good, even from the beginning. Um, no, it, it doesn't happen that way. So just accept it. Accept that you're going to be doing a whole lot of drawings that you're not happy with. I mean, what what else are you expecting? Um, the guy from Drawbox really, he has these little cartoon strips and he talked about embracing failures. You know, carry your failures around with you because in the end, they will be your greatest triumph. So, so yeah, em embrace the failure. It's, ex expect it. It's gonna happen, it's gonna come. But eventually, it'll get better and better and better. So, all right, number three. Uh, the third reason, and this one is why you might be feeling frustrated, and it is art videos. <laughs> okay, I understand the irony here, because I am also putting out art videos, which means... I am frustrating you, <laughs> all right? Um, but here's, here's the deal with art videos. I love art videos. Um, they, are, they are so awesome. I, I play some of them while I'm drawing. That Some of them are entertaining. But here's the deal. Here is the deal. Um, art videos really tend to make things look simple. Right, so w let me let me give a little bit of my experience here. When I was doing the Proco Figure Drawing Fundamentals course, and in the very early stages where you're just doing these stick man gestures, right, and Proco is doing the demonstrations and stuff like that, I would go, oh yeah, I I, I can draw a stick man. <laughs> uh, I can draw a stick man. I mean, come on. And then you take the pencil out. And you're like, what in the world is my hand doing? It is just a circle. <laughs> so it, I don't know if, you, if any of you have ever done gesture drawings. They're like, oh, it's just, it's, it's just three simple lines. There's a C, there's an S, and an I. And I go, oh, yes, a C, an S, and an I. I can do this. And you start putting it on paper and the most horrific images come out. I mean, your, your things look nothing. <laughs> your things look nothing like the experts. And 
it is really frustrating. You begin asking yourself, what is going on here? If I can't draw a simple C curve, if I, it, am I really thinking that someday I'm going to be doing more than this? If I, if I can't draw a simple C? But again, this is, this is the challenge because the best art videos, their role is to make it look simple. But what you need to realize is that the best art videos are also produced by the professionals. And one of the things that professionals learn and one of the things we learn as we continue to grow and progress is how to make simple things look elegant and look nice. Like really, really that is one of the key things that you're trying to do as an artist. You're trying to simplify and you're trying to make it look pretty. And, and that is something that I have learned is so difficult. And so here we are as a beginner trying to do one of these most difficult things, not realizing how difficult this actually is. So, so here's the deal on this. Watch art videos, like them, enjoy them, practice from them, but just realize that even the simplest things that you see on the art videos have taken the taken oh <laughs> uh, these professionals it took them years to master those simple strokes that they're putting down um, and so it's going to look easy but just know that again you're not you're not alone in this you know I I have been there looking at these simple things and trying to do, to do them and seeing how difficult they are so just keep that in mind don't let art videos frustrate you and stress you out. It's okay, practice from them, enjoy them, but chill, all right? Okay, number four. And some of these things are gonna say, <laughs> are, are gonna say I'm so self-evident, right? So growth doesn't come in steady, consistent increments, all right? So imagine this, you don't rock up at the gym, right? And then the first day, you pick up a five pound weight. Uh, uh, uh. You come back the second day, you pick up, you pick up a 10 pound weight. Uh. You come back the third day, you're on to 15 pounds. Like, this, this isn't how it works. <laughs> this isn't how it works. You, you, you have a certain weight, you lift it, and you have to lift it for several sessions before you get to move on to another thing, right? Um, it's never just this constant improvement. It's the same thing with if you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to get fit. I mean, you work out for a week and you see nothing, <laughs> all right? <laughs> you, you know, you know, you work out for a week, uh, two weeks have gone past, three weeks have gone past, and even the scale doesn't want to tell you something different. It's a journey. <laughs> it is a journey and you're going to have to be consistent in order to one day you, you, you look in the mirror and you go, whoa, whoa, look, look what's going on here, you know? There's, there's just that moment when you finally see the progress. Now, others may, be, may or may not be seeing the progress, but it doesn't always register with you. And sometimes there is no visible difference, and, but, but just that one day, you're gonna look back and go, whoa, what happened? It's different. And the same thing is with drawing. I mean, like looking back at some of the things that I did before, some of the things I'm doing now, all I can say is, whoa. But it never felt like I was making progress 
in those early stages. But you have to stick with it because growth in life for most things does not come at a steady, consistent increment. And uh, Stephen Zapata actually points this out and he makes a good point in that a lot of times uh, a lot of these videos want to have you think that the most important thing is is the fact that you are practicing all of these uh, different skills and that is going to be the key to you getting to better and hardly no one talks about the mental struggles and the mental aspect of it but if it was just practicing all these little drills people would what would happen, he says, is that people would practice the drills, they would see an improvement, and that would motivate them to practice some more, and they would see improvement, and they would practice more, and that would escalate, and everybody would be great artists. <laughs> but that's not what happens, right? Because what happens in reality is that you practice the drills, and you still make crappy drawings, you practice some more, your drawings are still bad, you practice some more, you get frustrated, and you give up, right? I mean, this is what happens, and you have to consist consistently push through those drills, push through all the other drawings that you're doing because you want to be doing a variety of stuff sometimes. I'm gonna, that's going to come up soon as well here, but, but you have to push through and be consistent, and there is not going to be a steady increment. There are going to be jumps in your in your progress so don't let it stress you out if you aren't seeing progress every day all right just hang in there it will come it will come all right <clears throat> okay number five might have to pick up the pace here all right number five why you may be getting frustrated is you started learning as an adult now here's the deal right um as much as we like to think or may want to think that as adults we are being pure in our motives like no i'm really just doing this drawing thing as a hobby you know um i just i just want to have fun you know something to chill out <laughs> yeah yeah but at least in my case yeah i want to have fun but fun means getting better, all right? All right, let's cut to the chase here. Fun means getting better. And if I'm not seeing improvement, um, if I'm not feeling validated for the amount of effort I'm putting, listen, as adults, all right, let me, let, let's, let's get down to the bare bone here. As adults, you have more responsibilities and less time, right? And if you're going to choose to spend your time on something, you, you want to know that you're getting a return on your investment, right? Because the older you get, the scarcer time becomes, right? And if you're sitting down, putting all this time into this hobby of drawing, learning art, and all you're getting out is frustration, <laughs> let's be real here you're going to start questioning whether you are spending your time wisely. All right? That's just the bottom line of it. And when you watch kids draw, they are not really putting that pressure on themselves. They're drawing really for fun. Some of them don't even have an end goal in mind. I mean, just like I just like to draw, you know? And we don't quite have that same thing when we're adults. It's not, it's not as pure. And that's why I used to, probably, I don't know this for a fact, but a lot of the great artists uh, started drawing really young. And I don't think it's that adult artists can't get very good as well. It's just that they have to get, we have to get over the frustration, right? The frustration that's caused by all these different things. Um, so again, realize that as an adult coming into it, you're going to feel this pressure that you need to be getting better. You need to be seeing a return on your investment. And that's real, right? That's real life right there. But again, 
just realizing that you're going to feel this tension, but knowing that you will come out on the other side and begin to enjoy the process. And, and this is really why I have this channel, because I hope it could be an inspiration. <laughs> Again, in the beginning, I almost gave up, but I hope this could be an inspiration that, that you know, you will start coming out on the other end. And I'm not there yet. I mean, people look at the one or two things that I am doing, and but I know, <laughs> I know there are a lot. I'm afraid of drawing a lot of stuff, okay? And I'm not even going to go start talking about drawing from imagination yet. But anyway, hope that I can be a part of that light at the end of the tunnel, right? All right, all right, all right. So, number six. Number six, this, I think this is a really important one. Um, your goal is too big. What, what, what are you saying? <laughs> Everyone says, no, you must, you must set your dreams high, you know? It, you have to reach for the stars, right? But yeah, I think we're mixing things up. That's your dream. You dream big. But if that dream is your goal, you're going to be waiting a long time to achieve anything. And you're probably right to give up. <laughs> I mean, if you set a lofty goal and that's, and that's all you have look f to look forward to, I mean, it's going to be tough to accomplish anything. Uh, one of the things that um, Jasper, the, the guy who commented, uh, critiqued my the, the first critique at Proco, who really turned every, started turning everything around for me, he pointed out, you can't be setting goals for yourself that are outside of your control to accomplish, right? This is so important. You can't set goals for yourself that are outside of your control to accomplish. You can't, you can't, okay, so here's a goal you cannot accomplish. In three weeks, I'm going to be able to draw lay standing poses from imagination. <laughs> right? Um, can you do that in three weeks? Maybe. But su suppose you can't. A better goal would be this. I'm going to try six days out of the week to practice at least 30 minutes a day. Now that's something that's fully in your control to achieve. Or e even more specific, six days a week for the next three weeks, I am going to practice standing poses from imagination for 30 minutes a day. Now that's very specific. You can, you can celebrate every single day that you're able to achieve that goal every week that you achieved the six days out of that week, you can celebrate that you met your goal. That's fully in your control. At the end of the three weeks, are you able to do standing poses from imagination? Maybe, maybe you're able to do it on the first week, but that's not in your control. You don't get to control when your drawing levels up. That's not up to you. If that was up to you, I'd be, if that was up to me, I would be leveling up like minute by minute. <laughs> That's not up to you. We have to set goals that we can achieve and set up the goals that it leads to the dream. But knowing, keeping in mind that the dream isn't in your control to achieve. Right? You have to set the goals that are more specific, more doable, more actionable, and then you can dream. But the dream isn't in your control. Your goal may actually be a dream. You need to set goals. All right? Still set dreams, but make sure you're not confusing the two, right? Number seven. And this is one a lot of people will know about comparing yourselves with others. And this is obvious, but let me say a few things here before I move on, right? You do not know 
what others are doing to achieve what you're comparing yourself to, right? I'm even going to say something a little bit personal here. I won't get into it too much, right? Because I know there are going to be some people who are watching. I know some of you are probably making faster, faster progress than me, right? But some of you are probably looking at the progress I am making and going, wow, how is it 11 months and he's already drawing this? Let me, let me say something here, right? So yes, I have a full-time job. So all that time for during work time is off limits. I have a family, I have a wife, I have kids. Um, but just that doesn't tell the whole story, right? Because I'm in a situation where I am able to draw a lot more than the average person with wife and kids, right? I'm not going to go into the whole detail now. I remember work hours are, are off limits, right? So not talking about work hours, talking about after work. Um, you don't know what you're comparing yourself to. You, you don't know, you don't know what the other person is doing. Um, that may be giving them more practice time than you. Um, you you don't know what's going on. Even some of even some of the bigger artists, right? Who are already professionals. Some professionals trace, and I'm not saying it as a derogatory thing. They have their practices set up, and they need to get certain things out in a certain amount of time. They're using different methods and stuff like that. You don't know what people are doing. And this is one of the challenges of, of looking at so many stuff on the internet and comparing yourself to all these different people you're seeing on Instagram, on YouTube. You don't know what people are doing. Stop comparing yourself. Stop comparing your progress and getting frustrated when you don't even know what people are doing. I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing a crazy amount of drawing. Um, some people, if they knew how much I was drawing, they would say, whoa, right? Um, so don't be, be careful about, and I get caught up in this too, right? So again, all these stuff I'm saying, not because I'm talking to you as if I'm saying, ho, 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 look at me, right? I'm saying that because this happens to me all the time, <laughs> right? It happens to me. And so that's why I'm that's why I'm sharing it here. Don't try as much as possible. It's you're gonna feel it. You you are going to feel it, right? But when you when you feel that, try to try to push it back. Try to push back on it a little bit. Because you don't know you don't you don't know that person's situation, all right? Okay. All right. Number eight. Uh, so volume volume in terms of the amount of time you're spending practice is one of the things that can help you see progress faster and i'm gonna steal this from steven zapata as well <laughs> because because it was interesting because i learned something about this right he pointed out you're probably he said he said if you don't have a timer sitting next to you right if you do not have a timer sitting next to you, you probably have no clue how much time you're spending drawing. You think you're spending a lot of time. And this happened to me uh, one weekend, I got a day to draw, right? <laughs> and I was, I was like, oh man, I drew for like the entire day today. <laughs> uh, but I was recording it, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was getting down later into the night. I was like, wait a minute. I looked at all the time that added up. It's like four hours. <laughs> like, it felt, I'm like, I drew for this entire day. Yeah, not so much. So 
you hear people talk about hashtag draw more, um, and there's some there's some negative sides to that hashtag, but yet it is true, right? If you want to develop in almost anything, right? Gym, you want to be a runner, you want to be like anything. The amount of time you have available to put into whatever hobby, whatever job task you have to do, you will see more progress in general, faster progress, the more time you have to invest into it, right? So if you want to see faster progress, which seeing progress <laughs> helps, helps to minimize the frustration, um, requires putting in some amount of volume. Um, so one of the things he suggests, and I'll suggest as well, is putting the dates on your practice sheets, right? And if, if possible, also recording the amount of time you're spending. Because you're like, oh, I draw all the time. I only miss a few days. If, if you're at the point where you're saying, I only miss a few days a week, <laughs> I, okay, I don't know your life story, right? But generally, you're missing more than a few days a week. All right? Write it down on the paper and see how much volume you're actually putting in. Write it down. Then look back at it. Let's see what happens. All right? All right. Number nine. I'm not going to say much about this one, but you'll know why. Number nine is you need to slow down, <laughs> right? You're frustrated because, you, and you're not seeing progress because you're going too fast. You need to slow down. And I'm not gonna say much about this because I did, <laughs> I did an entire two videos on this, right? Like talking about the number one reason, the number one, what our tip that separates the beginners from the intermediates and pros, right? You have to slow down and you have to actually do kind of intentional learning. But I'm not I'm going to leave it there. If you want to watch my video on that, I'm going to leave the link for it. You can take a look at that. All right. So number 10. In most cases, you need to be sticking with one thing long enough, one concept long enough to actually see progress. And I'm going to talk just a little bit about the frustrating period at the beginning of the Proco Figure Drawing Fundamentals course, because the more frustrated I got, what I started doing was going, you know what? All right, what I need to do is just, maybe I just need to jump forward to this other thing that's going to give me the edge and, and, and no, that looks simple. I can skip that part and, and go to this. Nope. <laughs> I didn't actually start seeing real progress until after that period, going back to the beginning, lesson one, and going, I'm going to stick with this until I see progress before I move on, which normally took around two to three weeks. And the interesting thing here is that you would, I would draw and draw and draw and it would be bad and bad and bad. And then for some reason, during the second week, maybe the third week, all of a sudden, it looked better. It looked better. I think, again, going back to this concept that you don't have to be frustrated because you have to recognize that you, you don't control when that light bulb moment goes off. You don't get to say that it's going to happen in 10 days. Maybe it will, but you only have one role just to sit down and move the pencil. That's it, <laughs> all right? And the cool thing is some courses are really designed to force you to do this, like the draw box course that I'm currently doing, all right? They have the lesson set up and it forces you to do the same thing over and over and over again. <laughs> right now I'm on lesson number five and I am drawing an unbelievable <laughs> number of animals, right? <laughs> if they didn't force that in the assignments, and again, this is why I like assignments, which is 
Anyway, <laughs> this is why I like assignments, right? Because I would have never, I would have never decided to draw the number of animals that they're having me, having me draw. That's the only reason why you haven't seen that video yet, right? But I'm almost at the end of it. And this time you will be seeing me actually drawing the vast majority of, of, of the pictures, right? But I would have never chose to draw so many animals. No way. I mean, it's unbelievable, right? I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, but I see the progress. I see the progress. And again, don't get... The idea here is knowing that the progress will come, but that you are not in control of when it comes. You have one job. Sit down, scribble on the paper. Take your time, slow down, try to do your best you can. That's it, that's your only job. Your job isn't to get better, it's just to put into practice, right? And then, two weeks later, three weeks later, if you stick to the same concept, don't go jumping around. It's like, okay, I have to draw, I have to draw squares. Okay, but I didn't really learn how to draw squares, but now I'm supposed to put them in perspective. Okay, let me put them in perspective. Oh, I didn't really figure out how to put them in perspective, but now it's moving on to start building stuff out of the squares in perspective. Like, <laughs> you can't even draw squares yet. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Anyway, number 11. You may be getting frustrated because you get caught up in having the correct gear. You do not need the correct gear. You use what you have, right? Oh, if only I had the correct pencil, they, they're showing me how, how to sharpen this pencil the correct way and, and it's because my pencil, it's because I'm using a mechanical pencil and I don't, oh, I just have a regular pencil and I, I just have a sharpener, I don't have, listen. <laughs> there are benefits for having the correct gear, but if you think the reason you're not making progress as a beginner, as an intermediate, the reason you're not making progress is solely due to your gear. Um, you might be making excuses. There is probably a point where a gear will become a limiting thing. But if you think you're encountering the limits by being frustrated, Mm, I'm going to challenge you that it's probably not the gear. That's going to be my challenge to you. It's probably not the gear. Don't get caught up in that and think that the gear is going to fix your problem. Unless you're in a mind state where you're not frustrated and you're just like, huh, I wonder if I, if I try this new method, how that will turn out. That, that may, that's a different situation. But if you're frustrated, I can't draw this circle correctly. And it's probably because I haven't sharpened my pencil correctly. Yeah, no, 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 it's not the gear. You can let that go. You can let it go, all right? You can let it go. Number 12, here's the deal. And you might not want to hear this, but you need to practice some things you hate doing. Yep. So yes, you draw what you love. Oh, I love this, I love that. But you, there are gonna be certain things to see progress. There are some things you need to practice that you might not, like, it might not be the highest thing on your list, you know? Might not be ticking the fun box. Um, one of those things for me uh, was Going through some of those courses, especially especially the uh, portrait drawing course, that focused so much on accuracy. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let you in on a secret. That last drawing that you saw on the portrait um, course, the one that I put on the thumbnail of the um, bald old, older guy, 
um, I almost, <laughs> I almost, I almost quit doing that one. I mean, not quit like drawing, but during the lay-in where you're so focused on accuracy, I almost was like, you know what? You know what? <laughs> I've already done a couple of these. They look okay. I don't need, I don't need to do this again. I could do my video and the whole Proco course on that note. It's gonna be, it's fine. And I could just show this one and I could, and I could come up with a story that is like, you know, sometimes it's okay to move on, you know? I, I was putting it together, I was putting it together in my head. And then I said, nope, no, I'm gonna push through it. I'm gonna push through it. And I'm glad I did, because that one turned out so much better. But here's the point, here's the point about pushing through it. Now, coming to the things that you've seen me draw more recently, even the, the figure drawings that I'm doing right now, the gesture drawings, getting the accuracy or getting more accurate on, on these drawings, the Frazetta, Frazetta drawings that I've done recently, it's so much easier. It is so much easier. It's um, sometimes to get the progress that you want to see, sometimes you're going to need to push through some of those pain points. One of them being focusing on some of the fundamentals and a little bit of accuracy. It's, it's kind of, at least for me, um, it's not as exciting and flashy, okay? But, but you have to do some of those longer, well, it's up to you. Let me, let me put it on there. It's up to you. There are going to be some things that you're going to need to challenge yourself with to see practice, to see progress. And just know that some of those things um, aren't going to be the, the, you know, as fun as you would like. But you don't have to get overly frustrated with it. Just know that it's a part of the progress. All right, 13. Part of the reason why you are frustrated with your progress is that you may be losing perspective on how far you've actually come. And so I encourage people to keep their practice sheets, date them, and then go back and look at them. When you're two, three months, two, three, four months out, go back and look at them. And you look at them without, <laughs> without the critical eye that you have having just done it. And you're gonna go, oh, interesting. <laughs> this, this, this look, let me tell you something. I was, what was I doing? I, I don't remember exactly what I was doing right now, but for some reason I had, I was going back and looking for uh, some different drawings that I did. And so I spread out, I'm keeping all my sheets in order. So I spread them out in specific uh, order around the floor. And I, then I got up and I looked at some of the older drawings that I had done. And I was, I was like, some of these are pretty good. <laughs> right? Some of these are pretty good. Um, yeah, don't lose perspective on how far you've come. Keep track of your work. That's number 13. Okay, number 14. We're winding down here. Uh, number 14. <laughs> I, I actually like this one. Number 14 is you say you're frustrated because you said, but I've tried everything. <laughs> Right. This is <laughs> all right. This isn't. This isn't really meant to be funny, right? I'm laughing at at myself a little bit here too. Um. But this is like you go to the gym, right? And you're like, but I did legs and arms and core. Why am I not buff yet? <laughs> all right. Sounds so dumb when you say it like that. It's like, 
No, I, I did legs yesterday. Where had my legs been? <laughs> uh, yeah. Doesn't, doesn't work like that, right? I mean, obviously it doesn't. What you have to do, you have to go back and you have to do legs again tomorrow. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day, is yeah, you did it. Now do it again. <laughs> I mean, okay. But I mean, so, so I'm laughing here because these are things that we instinctively know. But for some reason, at least for me, when I came to art, for some reason, my brain just told me it should be different. You know, I did the lesson. <laughs> I did the lesson on gestures. <laughs> why, why can't I draw this gesture? I did a standing gesture. Why can't I do this laying down one where the hands are all crossy and the feet all twisted up? How, how come I can't do that one if I just did a whole lesson on gestures? Um, <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And one of the good things, if, if, if you're really struggling with this, I would say this is one of the benefits of following a course as well. Because they walk you through the steps that you need to do. And some courses are free. And again, even I pointed out, if you're into portraits, uh, the portrait course from Proco that I reviewed, all of the instructional videos are available for free, right? All of the instructional videos on there are available for free. Only the real-time videos, real-time drawing videos, are not available for free. Go do it. Go do it. Um, yeah. And so number 15. And now that I'm at number 15, I'm thinking of a bonus one, so I think I'm going to throw that in as well. But Number 15 is important and it really ties in everything that I've said so far is that you have to trust the process, right? Everyone says it takes time. All the professionals will tell you it takes time. You should probably believe them for the most part that it takes time. Trust, trust the process. And what is the process? In this process, you only have one responsibility. And that is this, to sit down with a pencil, with a paper, with a brush, whatever medium you're using, and move your hands and try to do the best. That's your only job. And then to come back the next day and do it again and again and again that is your only responsibility after that your brain and <laughs> fate whatever you believe in <laughs> uh, takes over from there you don't get to decide when the progress comes so stop worrying about it just you do your part. Trust the process. The progress will come, but you have to do your part, right? And this bonus one that I just thought about, just because how much I was laughing here um, during this whole process, is to, is to try not to take yourself too seriously. This is a tough one because I didn't feel it when I was going through my frustration. But I hope just hearing some of this, um, when, you, when you do feel that frustration, that anger um, coming through, you can step back and, and laugh at yourself for a bit. It's tough, but I've, I have recently found myself doing this, right? Like, okay. There's a drawing on the animals uh, draw box lesson that will be coming out next, um, where, where I drew it, and it just looks weird, right? Because <laughs> you're drawing these stuff with shapes, 
that you don't have full control over when you're trying to do ovals. It came out kind of strange and I was like, that's weird. <laughs> All right. Um, you have to come to the point where you realize that it's really not up to you when you're going to put down that perfect line, that perfect circle, that perfect curve. Just think about that. Because if it was actually up to you, you would put down the perfect circle, the perfect curve, the perfect line every time. But why are you not doing it? <laughs> if you, hold on, hold on. If, you, if you think I'm wrong, if you think I'm wrong, let me ask you this question. If you think you are in control of when you put, when you are going to put down the perfect line, let me ask you this question. Why don't you do it every time? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> that's, that's not, that's not part of your, your, your <laughs> that's not part of your responsibility. All right. Your responsibility is to sit down with your paper, your medium, whatever you have, and to do your best. Just try, just whatever you have to do that day, do your best. That's your only responsibility. Your responsibility isn't to put down the perfect line every time because you can't do it. It's just to do your best. And so don't take yourself so seriously. When, when you see a drawing that you're not happy with, don't take it so seriously as if it's a reflection of yourself, right? Just say, whoa, that one came out bizarre, all right? Have a laugh at it, and the next day, come back, sit down, scribble on the paper. One day, you'll be surprised at your progress. All right, so that's it. Um, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe if you want to follow the progress here. Um, if you have additional tips of things that may be getting people frustrated, things, solutions, ideas, let me know in the comment section. Also, I'm coming up on one year um, in terms of this art channel and I'm thinking of doing a question and answer. Um, if you have questions for me that you would like me to answer, if I get enough of them, I'll do a video, a question and answer video. If not, I'll probably just turn some of those questions into videos for the channel. Um, so leave a comment down below. Let me know if you enjoyed this and I will see you next time. All right. Peace.